The Ark of the Covenant. Something came out that may add some context to why there is so much tension in the Middle East. Is the Ark of the Covenant actually underneath the Temple Mount in Jerusalem? All right, so check this out. Shout out to CBN News. They've been doing a good job of covering some of the things in Israel. And I found this clip extremely interesting. Okay, so we talked about the Temple Mount, which is a lot of the issues in uh, Jerusalem and in Israel over the Temple Mount. And now we have the Ark of the Covenant potentially contributing to this. Okay, so check this out. Bible times, Yom Kippur was the only day of the year when the high priest could enter the Holy of Holies, the most sacred room in the temple. You guys catch that? Yom Kippur was the only time where they could enter the Holy of Holies. Interesting that the Yom Kippur war happened, I think, 50 years ago, and then the attack, this latest attack happened on the anniversary of the Yom Kippur War on Yom Kippur. Hidden inside was the Ark of the Covenant, which contained the Ten Commandments God gave to Moses. Today, no one knows where the Ark is. Some claim it is far away as Ethiopia or Ireland, but one explorer believes it lies beneath a giant rock at Judaism's holiest site. Researcher and author Harry Moskov took CBN News through the Western Wall Tunnels, up to the ramparts of the Temple Mount, and into the chambers surrounding Judaism's holiest site. His book, The Ark Report, chronicles his two-decade quest to find the legendary icon. So That's crazy. This man spent two years looking for this, and what he's going to show us next is, is pretty shocking. Well, here we are approaching the three arches. He says one theory is that it was taken out of the temple and hmm. carried to Jericho 18 miles away. It says in uh, Jeremiah that some of the vessels of the temple were exited, uh, sort of escaped, as it were, through this area at the destruction of the first temple. But Moscow took us to the spot where he believes the Ark lies. This particular section of the Western Wall is really fascinating, actually, because this stone is 570 mm -hmm. tons. Mm. Moscow believes a key clue lies behind this giant rock and says high-tech search tools give credence to his theory. Two wow. years ago, there were high-tech search tools give credence to his theory. His, his theory is what? That the Ark of the Covenant is actually here, near the Western Wall, under the Temple Mount? Test done by the University of Nebraska, sonar tests, etc., uh, using electromagnetic uh, waves. They actually found what's called a storage space across from here. So actually, th there was a purpose for putting this giant stone, this massive uh, slab, here. One of the reasons, in my opinion, is to protect whatever it is on the other side. And according to my theory, the Ark actually was buried by King Josiah, I think it was uh, 568 BC, in back of these uh, boulders, these massive stones. In fact, underneath the Temple Mount lie dozens of underground tunnels and chambers. Mm. Back then, 150 years ago, Charles Warren went in, actually did a survey. Nothing's really been done for political purposes, obviously, unfortunately. Now, for political purposes, what is political purposes? What is he talking about? If you guys don't know, the Temple Mount is the holiest site in Judaism. It is the third holiest site in Islam. Christians also believe that, well, as well as Jews, that that is where God created uh, Adam, that that is where Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son at that moment, right? And that that is where Moses got the law. Now, in, Ju in, 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 in Jerusalem, right now, there's something called the status quo. The status quo is basically the Jews, Israelis, went in and they conquered Jerusalem. Prior to 1967, they didn't control Jerusalem. It was controlled by Jordan, okay? However, even though they conquered Jerusalem, they still allowed Jerusalem to exist under what is called the status quo, meaning that they, the Temple Mount, Jews aren't allowed to pray on the Temple Mount. There's only certain instances where they can go onto the Temple Mount. Why? Because in Islam, their third holiest site is the Temple Mount, and there's a mosque there. Okay, so like when I was in Israel, I we could not, with our tour guide, we could not walk onto the Temple Mount because our tour guide was Israeli, right? And so th this is called the status quo. Like, listen, we're not going to ruffle feathers. This is a tense situation. Let's just keep things as peaceful as they are, even though the Jews technically control Jerusalem and specifically have control over the, the Temple Mount since 1967. They kind of have this like agreement amongst themselves. Interestingly enough, within the last year, some of the new, more conservative government, which again, conservative in Israel just means more pro Israel ethno state, they want a Jewish ethno state, have walked on the Temple Mount without much notice, kind of causing the, the tensions and the, and the controversies. That is what he means when he says political. Since then? Since then, no one's been allowed to even put a shovel, nothing. Yeah. But uh, basically, they were the ones that surveyed the whole area, and they were the ones who picked out the tunnels, etc. Yeah. 
<laughs> they couldn't find the ark, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was the time. Warren, a British explorer, documented those tunnels at the request of Queen Victoria, just one of many throughout history looking for the ark. When people like the Crusaders and the Knights Templar, even the uh, Palestine Exploration Fund, which was originally commissioned by Queen Victoria, came over the centuries to look for the ark. What they were looking for was a golden box with the staves, but what they, what they really should be looking for is a room. Hmm. I mean, you can you can you can get into conspiracy theory land right there, right? He's talking about the Knights Templars. If you guys don't know, that's going to connect to the Freemasons, the Illuminati. He's talking about, you know, the Brits sending people to find this, this, this Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies, right? They could have been right up against the wall. On the other side of the wall is the Ark. Moscow says the original Holy of Holies had another chamber directly below it. Mm. Actually, in the blueprint itself of the first temple, a chamber should be built exactly the same uh, Holy of Holies, exactly the same level of holiness as the one right above it. It was set up right from the beginning mm. to house the Ark with a golden floor and everything. That's how Solomon built it, constructed, so this, the Ark itself could go down. Right, it could go down. Do you feel right. like there's a time when the Ark itself, when the time is right, will be revealed? I do. Timing is incredibly important, incredibly significant. Obviously, it's a, it's a groundbreaking, game-changing, <laughs> biblical type of discovery. My personal opinion, is that uh, when it does happen, it won't be in a clandestine way where we're sneaking through these tunnels, you know what I mean, and we're bringing it out uh, under cover of darkness. It'll be a great occasion, and it'll mm -hmm. help bring the Messiah. It'll be something that all nations will, will really rejoice in. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. And again, whether or not you agree or don't agree that the Muslims have any claim to the Temple Mount or whatever, I'm saying that that is what it is right now. That is why they're not able to go in there right now. And there are some in Israel, I, I would say they're probably more on the extreme conservative end, that do believe that they should be able to have dominion and Jews should be able to worship there and they should be able to go in there and explore and see if they could find this Ark of the Covenant. Okay, now this is a clip from Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Moscow credits Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark for the renewed interest. There are some things that got right about the, you know, the power of the Ark, etc., and its destructive forces should get in the wrong hands, and it knows where it is, so to speak. It suddenly became a thing, you know. Oh, what is the Ark of the Covenant? You know, what is that? Oh, yeah, it sort of put it into the face of the public, and maybe that was its best success. Yeah. I loved it personally. You know, it's Hollywood. What do you think is the main takeaway people need to know about the Ark of the Covenant? It's a real thing, just like it did 2,700 years ago. It still exists today. It's got the broken tablets that Moses uh, crashed down there at Mount Sinai and the second tablets. It really does exist. We're really going to see it, hopefully, in our lifetime. Wow. Uh, again, it is a catalyst for the Messiah to come. Until it is revealed, the Ark of the Covenant built by Moses in the wilderness will continue to fascinate the world. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy, and it's crazy that 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 was shot, that video was made before all the recent conflict in that region. And he's saying that they believe that finding the Ark of the Covenant could help usher in the, the Messiah. Now, something interesting to note is that when we look at what the Jewish Messiah, what the expectation for the Jewish Messiah was and what Jesus was, they, they weren't on, on, on one and the same. They were expecting a Messiah to come to establish peace, to have a military reign, right, where we believe that Jesus came to serve and to save humanity and deal with the issue of sin. But their view of the Messiah does align with our view of the return of Jesus. They're ushering in the Messiah and the way we view Jesus coming back, where Jesus is going to come back not as the lamb, but as the lion, it does align with the Jewish view of the Messiah. Uh, and again, there's a spectrum within the Jewish view of who is the Messiah and how he will come and all that kind of stuff, right? So interesting, interesting stuff. We see, according to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask Him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when He answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.